All right, I'm putting out a weather alert for my area of the world down here. Um, the models for the past few days have been throwing out something pretty unusual, and this has the potential to maybe develop into a hurricane off the southern coast of Brazil. The models are putting it out, but they don't know what to do with it. You'll see we're going to run through it a couple times here, and I'm going to break it down how I see it. Um, but yeah, they don't know what to do with it, but they're consistently outputting a storm forming out here. And since it so rarely occurs, the, they don't have a handle on if it's going to come back towards shore, where it's going to go out in the ocean. So there's something to keep an eye on for the next few days. All right, so this is the current situation now. We're going to run it through. Here it goes. All right, and now that's not the storm. Here's the storm forming up there to the north, and then it just sits there, gets kicked back you see that it gets a little kick back towards land and then it goes out into just craziness so this is what's happening now it's going to run through slower now this just passed overhead we had rain for the last couple of days so this gets pulled out to sea now keep an eye on the convergence tail that blue line that connects it back towards land see it's right there that the storm is going to form it's still connected see it pulses through and then the storm, the new energy connects to it, forms out a storm, still connected, mind you, and then right there it breaks. And now it becomes a standalone storm that's not connected to the jet stream at all. It's just an isolated low that the models don't know what to do with at that point. See, right now, a, a typical piece of energy comes off the coast and then it just says that it picks it up and drives it out to sea and then a huge storm pressure excuse me puppy pressure was down in the 950s i think on that storm um so they're just seeing a lot of energy being out there and it doesn't exactly know what to do with it but again this is what it typically is a storm will form around uruguay there the on the convergence line then goes out to sea but the fact that this little tentacle here keeps it connected to the land and gives it an opportunity there for a new piece of energy to come off right there it, it uh to form and then when it does it's still connected so it's still getting all that it needs as a surge to create the storm and then right about here you could see it's still connected on the front basically it's still tapped into the energy coming from the front that is still connected you see those blue lines towards the bottom of the screen the very bottom right corner see is the next is the storm that that tail is connected to so it's hooked into the jet stream there's no doubt about it and then right there it breaks and when it breaks you can see this it's now a standalone storm that is just out there and the sister Computer models don't know how to handle it because that so rarely occurs. So uh, there's been two tropical storms, tropical cyclones, um, down in this part of the world. In 2010, Tropical Storm Anita formed in roughly the same area as this one is forecast to. And it missed land. It just kind of danced around, you could see there, and, and went out to sea. It didn't, it didn't, there was no landfall. Now, just to give you uh, to get your perspective here. If you look towards the bottom left, uh, you can see like there's kind of a muddy water inlet there. That's the Rio de la Plata. And to the south of that is Buenos Aires. And to the north of that brown spot is Montevideo, Uruguay. Uruguay is there as like a circle. And then it's Brazil mostly to the north. So hope I did a good job explaining that. I, I don't know. I don't know if people know that part of the world. So this was it off at the strongest point offshore. Not all that impressive. But the one that struck, this actually did occur landfall 2004 as a Category 2. I think it made landfall as a, as a Category 1, but at its you know strongest point, it was a Category 2. And you can see, again, same exact part of the world. You know, there's that, that notch there in in Brazil, and then again to the south, that brown murky water that's connected to that green patch going off screen, that's the division between Ar Argentina and Uruguay, and then Argentina goes a little more to the north, 
and then, you know, obviously it's all Brazil there. But that's what we're looking at here. This was Cyclone Katarina in March of 2004. And the same thing, it just developed along a stationary front and, you know, caught the thing and did the thing. Now, those were in fall. Uh, you know, it was March, and they were both occurred in March. So that was, it's opposite in the Southern Hemisphere, so that's fall. And now it is the dead of winter. July 20th is tomorrow's, tonight's going to be really cold, and tomorrow's supposed to be colder. Like, it's winter down here. But again, it's this is the computer model here, and I tried to take basically the same picture. You see to the bottom left is that inlet there that was all muddied. Um, and it forms roughly in the same exact location as those other two storms. So we shall see. Uh, the land here is not prepared for this. You get a lot of mudslides. The infrastructure is just not there to deal with hurricanes. You know, widespread wind damage, and flooding, and things like that. So I'm obviously going to keep an eye on this as it may directly affect my weather in the next 10 days or so. So if it, you know, I'll, I'll update if it uh, warrants it. Hopefully not. Hopefully this is some crazy weather anomaly that we're seeing now as things are changing and it goes harmlessly out to sea like all of its friends. All right. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for watching.